You're listening to DraftKings Network. Welcome to the Big Sui, presented by DraftKings. Why are you listening to this show? The podcast that seems very similar to the other Dan Levitard podcast. I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> in fact, the only difference seems to be this imaging. I have been tempted in restaurants just walking past tables to grab somebody's fries that if they're just there. That hasn't happened to you guys? I've done it. And now, here's the marching man to nowhere, fat face, and the habitual liar. I mean, is your sound working? Do we have functioning yes. sound? Uh, uh, Mike Ryan was offering you the ability to have better access than you had at the Georgia Tech game, uh, but you went. You you were insistent on sitting with your people, correct? I'm I'm a man of the people, Dan, and uh, you know I came to the game with my friends who were all GT alums. We had tickets right in the middle of the Miami section because we thought the game was going to be during the day, so we wanted to avoid the sun. And so I said to Mike, thank you very much for the gesture, but I'm going to have to politely decline. And by the way, Mike, you said that, oh, I was killing you. Dude, I texted you one time yesterday or on Saturday night. And it was you, were, you were actually oh, in my line of show. I mean, you were actually in my line of view. You didn't know this, but I would occasionally <laughs> glance and you were torturing me all game long. You were on one, my friend. Just didn't, just you didn't were, know it. Any time that you turned your back and talked to the people behind you, you were essentially talking to me. I had a, I had, <laughs> I, you sent me a selfie from before the game. I'm like, oh, he's not that far. He's two sections away. And the one Yellow Jackets baseball jersey in that section wasn't hard to find. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> people are writing in that number one in the BCS is, the Miami uh, chant today. It reminds me of what Mike McDaniel said after the game. It was very funny because uh, they've got more yards. They're the greatest show on surf and they've got more yards than any uh, team ever through the first five games of the season. And he's like, well, accomplished our offseason goal of statistical output after five games. <laughs> Miami, uh, the U is back is BCS number one ranked before they played Georgia Tech. I can never take that away from after us. The, after that, well, Georgia Tech just did. You don't, you don't know how many group me. chats I circulated that. I'm like, we got to bring the computers back. Uh, but I mean, where, where does this rank with, uh, in terms of Georgia Georgia Tech football joy for you. Well, Dan, I mean, I think the thing you got to realize is we know we know we're terrible. Like we lost to Bowling Green last week at home by a lot. So we came to this game just like, all right, you know, hang out with my buddies and, you know, maybe we'll, we'll catch a fun game or whatever. And we didn't catch a fun game, by the way. No one's talking about that. The game was boring. It was boring. That first half was a slog. I almost fell asleep at halftime, to be honest with you. My friends started taking pictures of me, and that's what woke me up a little bit because I didn't want to be the guy sleeping at the game. But it was really, really dull. But at the end of the game, we walked away, and I said, guys, you know, we got together this weekend, and we had a lot of conversations about, oh, remember that time when we went to this game? Remember when this happened back, you know, 20 years ago, whatever? And I'm like, man, we just added a new memory. This one's in the Legend Locker. This is one of the greatest Georgia Tech games I've ever been to. You were with your college friends. How many of them were in town? You were not any kind of sober by the end of that game that you thought was a dead <laughs> game. Can, can, I can <laughs> confirm your report, Dan. <laughs> it's, it's a little, it's a little chilly. I actually only had like half a white claw at the game. I, I didn't drink that much because I was very thirsty because it was hot, and I just realized I found out for the first time that Hard Rock Stadium doesn't have air conditioning. Not in the concourse. Not in the stands. Only in the club suites, apparently. So I w it was. I was. I'm sweltering. I, I couldn't believe how thirsty I was. So I just kept buying those bottled waters for like six dollars a pop. Yeah, it's an outdoor stadium. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, air conditioning. We have it. It's, it's in outdoor stadiums all over the country. No, no, no. Like you have that in like retractable roofs, but they have no, big no. ass fans. That's all you'll have yeah, in the concourse. Big no, ass no. fans. They they blow AC in, in modern stadiums. I I know you're used to whatever kind of facilities those are, but in modern stadiums, there's air conditioning out there. Can you give us some more because you immediately yes. went to social media and started just throwing your head back and laughing, which we would have played for the audience if we had a uh, working audio. <laughs> uh, so let me just start by saying, number one, I've got to stand up for the Miami fans. 99.9% .9 of them were good sports, were classy about it. Uh, like their vitriol was all directed towards who it should have been directed. 
Mario Cristobal. That is, I want to make that clear because a lot of people I saw were commenting, that's real bold of you to do that at the stadium. And I'm like, no, nah, man, everybody was cool except, except for a couple of jokers behind me. And so, like I said, we knew we were terrible. We knew, like, we're probably not going to win this game. But it was boring, and we were in it. We had about, like, 100 yards of total offense, I want to say, in the second half. I mean, it was we had more first downs from penalties than we did from actual first downs. This is where we were at as a team, right? So we scored our first touchdown, and me and my friends started celebrating. You know, like, I had my phone up, and I was like, ah, we did it. Like, we did it. And the guy behind me says, sit down and shut up. I'm like, what? He's like, oh, oh, big deal. You guys scored. I said, buddy, do you know how sports work? Like, I'm <laughs> I'm happy my team scored. You tell me not to be happy? And he starts yelling. I'm like, bro, why are you so mad? And everyone in the section just starts laughing because it's clear. This dude is incensed. So he's angry yelling, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm like, you're clearly mad about something. I mean, you you guys are winning. Why aren't you happy? Why are you mad at me? And then he starts saying, how many national championships do you guys have? And you know, I was just like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> Your last national championship was pre-9-11. What are you talking about? People on the, on the field were born when you guys won one. So then that's, that's when I clicked, and I, now I'm awake. Now I'm awake. Now I'm into it. So every time Miami would get the ball on offense, right before they snap, you know the crowd gets into a hush, I would just yell out real loud, Watch out for Michael Irvin. He's been killing us all game. <laughs> Who's got Willis McGahey? Somebody stop. <laughs> Clint Portis is right there. And everyone's dying. I said, yo, they got the DeLorean. Stop them. Stop them from going back in time and bringing Grace onto the field. So then Tyler Van Dyke throws a, a pick. That's when I sent my first, who we got an interception video. And then that's where it really started getting. This dude just yelling. Every time Miami, Miami would do something good, he'd start yelling, why did you post that on Levitard, huh? Why did you put that on the Levitard feed? Well, this is what he ended up putting out in a way that got us all in trouble because now Miami fans are mad at our account for sounding like we're anti-Miami. <laughs> misplaced anger, I'd, but I'd here, say. Yes, I would say. Well, Miami the, deserves there's it There's a lot of misplaced I mean, anger. Amin got some. I love Amin turning around. What are you so mad about? Did you not watch? <laughs> like, it's obvious that every you go to a sporting event to feel good, to enjoy your evening, every Everyone who left there that cares about Miami left the way Mike did, needing that suicide prevention number as a as a public service because they were so broken. Then that was in the third quarter. This dude was mad all game long. It had yeah. nothing. To, he wasn't that even tracks. there for the end. I, I I was saving it. He wasn't even there for the end. He had left. Right. He he missed that whole part, which really upset me. By the way, there was another guy. I call him Angry Fan Number Two. At one point. Miami had scores a touchdown, and he starts screaming at me, why don't you dap them up? I'm like, what are you talking about? The fans in front of you, the Miami fans in front of you, why don't you dap them up when, they, when we did something good? When you guys scored, they dapped you up. I was like, first of all, these people in front of me are cool. That's why. We've been joking all game long. Second of all, do you want me to congratulate you guys every time something good happens? Fine, I'll do it. So then anytime guys would get like a third and one conversion, I would tap my man in front of me and say, hey, man, can I shake your hand? He's like, sure. I would shake his hand, then I would turn and I'd look back at the guy like, like this? Like this? Am I doing it right? Like this? And everybody in the section was dying laughing again. Because these two you're, play, you're playing with fire here. You are oh. you not paying attention to what's going on in America and oh. in stadiums? Like you are playing with fire, making, uh, doing that kind of stuff in uh, in Miami's well, land. Well, well, I'm gonna well. Two things made me bold. Number one was again, everybody in the section was on my side because everyone could tell. Man, these guys are just here to have a good time. We're not being disrespectful. We're not talking trash. We're just celebrating when our bad team does something mildly positive. So everyone kind of had our backs. But also, I have my boy with me now. This is the funny part. The final play when I'm laughing and people see behind me a guy in a gray shirt who looks pissed. Everyone thought he's a Miami fan. That's my buddy Aaron. I went to college with him. He's part of our group. He's upset because of the Jamokes who were yelling and, ta and talking trash because he, unlike me, he's not about shenanigans. So I won't lie, Dan. I kind of bet that my buddy was going to take care of business if business had to get taken care of. Just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> let's uh, let's play the sound now and the video of Amin at the end of that game, really playing with fire with an agitated <laughs> Miami fan base uh, all around him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 
<laughs> so good. <laughs> I did see that as he was recording it. <laughs> and then the, see the, the, the <laughs> kick back of the neck. Really, like I just got taken back. There's choppers going on. <laughs> you got him good to me. <laughs> There's choppers I in the really background. Makes it so much better. It makes me feel so much better now knowing that Mike could see all of this in real time. <laughs> but guys, really quick, I do have a top five. I do have a top five in the game. Okay. Okay. Oh, right. Unfortunately, top we're out of time. Five. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, we don't need to get no, to your top five. I want five. to get to his top five. You, you sure? We, yes. we what is the stretch? top five? Uh, we will talk Dolphins nationally. Can you they're, make it a top three? They're a national story. Number I can be quick. You got outside looking in or just start with number no, five? No, just go to the five. That's five. That's what's, five. what's the subject? Top five what? Okay. Neil puns. Number five. Neil, oh, do not mess this up. You want to stay with this? Four. I try to, I try to stop you, man. <laughs> Nelt Carter, oh. star of you take the good, you take the bad, you kneel the ball, and there you have the facts of life. Oh. Number three. Kneel on grass, Tyson. <laughs> That's the first one I actually get. Number, I didn't get the other two. Because right. you don't know who Nelt Carter. You get it. It doesn't mean it's good. But number, you get it. number two. <laughs> the captain had to kneel. <laughs> <laughs> now that one I know. Smile, Tenille, I smile. Yeah, but he's going, he's, it's 1970s. He's going with really <laughs> musty references. Finally, number of facts of life was the most modern. And that's like, what, 80s? Uh, number one. Liam Nielsen. No. No, 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 no. Thank He's you. gone too far. Okay. All right. I mean, thank you for being on with us. He woke Top up, three would have been fine. He, he woke it's up great seeing you. very <laughs> early. <laughs> very <laughs> early out west. He, he was texting us this morning. Hey, I'm up. <laughs> it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm up and I'm ready to come on. If you guys just want to. You kick him out of the Zoom. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Tenille. If, if, if you just want to throw. This is some bullshit. If you want to just turn on the YouTube for everybody. I could have done 45 minutes on that Aggies win. Sit there smiling. I had to talk about the Aggies win two weeks after. <laughs> Mike, nobody wants to do that. You no, understand I know. that. No, I, I understand. I understand exactly what the the whole setup is here. Huh. And I, I hope you guys are happy that I'm sad. Yeah. The Miami Dolphins yesterday, Stugat, uh, this is rare in the modern age of football. Not only Wink Martindale saying, their defensive coordinator of the Giants, hey, this is the greatest show on turf except supersonic. Like this, you know, the, 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 you don't hear professional coaches talking the way Wink Martindale was talking where he's like, uh, yeah, I slept like a baby before facing this offense. I got up every two hours and started crying. Um, <laughs> and for the Dolphins, you know, the, the rare part of what I saw yesterday, rarer than even a Dolphin team that has giant plays, giant explosive plays, and is clearly the fastest team in the league. Not the best. San Francisco and Philadelphia can stake that claim. But to me... What I saw yesterday against a bad team, even though it's a bad team, to win by 15 when you're minus three on turnovers and one of the three is a pick six, yep. that doesn't happen a lot in the NFL, where you've got a minus three on the turnovers and one of them is allowing points that are 102 yards and you're still covering the spread and you're still winning by two touchdowns as the Giants play a reasonably strong game for the Giants and an efficient game for the Giants because they weren't spinning the ball up. They were getting sacked, but half as many times as they got sacked the week before. I want to get to the spread in a second, but they ran the ball 23 times for 222 yards. Like they're averaging nine and a half yards per carry. They could have only run the ball yesterday and still won by the same score. Perhaps even more, because that eliminates the pick six. A-Chan uh, had 11 touches, and how many, yard, uh, how many yards is he getting per touch now? Like 11. Yeah. 11. 11 carries, 151 yards yesterday. So And and they, they kicked the tires on every running back in the sport this offseason, and they've got someone who's outperforming all of them. All, yeah. He has been better than everyone in the league at the position that they were trying to get to play the position for them when they already had him on the roster. Just quickly, because the Dolphins were my big play yesterday, just to address the spread, I have never been so terrified to see Tyrod Taylor in my life. I mean, <laughs> that back door was wide open for him. He was gunning for it. I was a nervous <laughs> one. <laughs> he survived. God bless football, where you can find all of Stugatz's gambling biases soaked into every ounce of the analysis. 
This episode of the Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gatz is sponsored by Sleep Number. Did you hear about the football player who couldn't sleep? He kept getting caught in a tackle of insomnia. <laughs> when it comes to sleep, you need the MVP of beds to ensure you get quality sleep every single time. Wide receiver Jamar Chase depends on Sleep Number Smart Bed to take his game to the next level on and off the field. With a Sleep Number Smart Bed, quality sleep makes it easier to reach your unique potential no matter what each night brings. Science shows quality sleep helps improve your mental, emotional, physical, and relationship health. Insomnia and other sleep-related issues can be frustrating, but there are several strategies you can try to improve your sleep quality. Keep a regular bedtime and wake-up routine to help your circadian rhythm adjust better. Sleep Number Smart Beds track your circadian rhythm so you know your ideal schedule. Sleep Next Level. Unlock your unique potential with a smart bed that can perform as well as you. And now at its lowest price ever, the all-new Queen Sleep Number C2 Smart Bed is only $880, plus special financing for a limited time. Only at Sleep Number stores or sleepnumber.com. Subject to credit approval. See store for details. Don Lebertard. All the cruise ships go out at like 5 p.m. Yeah. And like, it's like a parade of cruise ships and they're all blowing the horns like, Brr. and there's all these people outside because it's like, it really yeah, does sound, like, it sounds like an old, an old Brr. truck. Yeah. I thought it was more like, Oh my god, that's that was really good. good. That's a good one. That was good. Wow. That's a good one. Wait, do it fake, again, do it again. Limited fake cruise ship horn. Stugats. Mm, oh, really <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm waving it to you. I'm waving. <laughs> yes! This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats. We are so back! Texas is so back. to do an interview? Every loss ever. I do have one question. Is it rivalry, showdown, or shootout? Shootout. That's what I think so, too. Yeah. That's what shootout. I think so, too. They got to quit changing the name. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Red River, Red, 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 <laughs> yeah. Red River Robbery. Although it's easier to say, because you try to say Red River Rivalry, blah, 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 blah. I have so many times, I'm like, Red River Rivalry, like I can't say it. Is Texas back? No. We're back. How much do you hate Oklahoma? Um, I hate Oklahoma more than anything in the world. They can go to hell for all I care. How much do you guys hate Texas? You know, hate's a little strong, but strongly dislike is definitely a true statement. That's nice. I yeah. would have just said hate. I, uh, 10 out of 10, definitely hate. Yeah. He hates Texas. I, I've become. Do you guys hate Oklahoma? So much! I hate Oklahoma more than anything in the entire world. I hate Oklahoma. There's world hunger, and then my hatred for uh, world hunger. My hatred for Oklahoma <laughs> is right here. There's cancer, and then there's Oklahoma. Hell yeah! Know where our priorities are at. No. Look, I don't say I disagree right now. These are my two favorite guys the whole day. Fuck them! Uh, back talking and whatnot. This is my first fried food of the day, because all you guys want is for me to eat fried food here. I, corn dog, 8 a.m. Why not? What are you going to miss most about the Big 12? Uh, nothing. Nice. I really won't miss much because we're going to destroy the SEC. Give us Georgia! I think Give us Georgia! Better. Lincoln Riley, how does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me look at orange and puke. Burnt, like his brisket. Nice. Chasing the money, always chasing the money. Do you watch the Dan Lepetard show with Stu Gotts? Uh, yeah, I listen every single day. We do. Absolutely. Yes. Duh. Now I will, and you should too! Oh yeah. Horns down, how is it? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, nice! We have the Oklahoma fans are now on the Texas side. So, let's just switch real fast. I am absolutely switching teams over here. It's called playing both sides, you can't lose. I've decided that I'm not going to check the Iowa score. Not even going to look at it. Having a great day, and I'm going to let it continue. Who's your favorite person on the show? I like Stugatz. Gotsy. Yeah. <laughs> we were looking for Lucy, but that's a good that's a good second answer. Dan. <laughs> stop the camera! Stop the camera! Stop it! I love Dan Levitard. 
Oh my gosh. Are you Lucy? I am. <laughs> Lucy, I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Lucy is on God Bless Football today. She admits where she admits that she wept during that game. She was just moved by all of the adjacent emotions around that. Yep. Uh, just so people know, Oklahoma and Texas, uh, it's a big money sport, obviously, paid $100 million to get out of their conference deals combined so that they could be in the – SEC and Jeremy found himself also moved by the things in that rivalry. Those games always seem to be close. They always seem to be dramatic, no matter how much better one of the teams is than the other. But when Mike Ryan asks me, well, Dan, how do you feel about what happened to the University of Miami as someone who went there? The answer is not like that. At 54 years old, um, just things have happened in my life that almost always make me put sports in a proper perspective that makes it more joyless than I wish that it was, less emotional than I wish that it was, because I'm interested in the sociology and the stories, but the games themselves, Mario Cristobal doesn't make me enraged where I can't sleep Saturday night because I'm so mad about what happened. But I understand that that's where our customers live. I understand that uh, all of us get to make a living because of how people care about sports that way. Jeremy's sitting there watching Texas, Oklahoma. I don't know which game, Stugatz, from the weekend you found the most interesting, but that one. I, I mean, Texas yeah. has, uh, Texas is feeling like they're back because they somehow got the Manning brother at quarterback or the Manning child, Manning prodigy. Well, they beat Alabama, and you were just playing so well. Like, he was playing so well headed into that game, and he played well in that game, but Sark cost him a game. He I did. was so blown away by the first three minutes of that football game. I have not found myself that emotionally invested in a game that I had no reason to be emotionally invested in in forever. And it was just, you could feel not only the emotion in the stadium, but through the players that this is like one of the last remaining real rivalries where Dylan Gabriel's playing quarterback in this game after missing it last year and so he's got something to overcome you've got Ewers and his his clear nerves at the beginning he throws a pick at the very beginning of the game that leads to an Oklahoma touchdown then this unbelievable full length of the field drive that ends in an interception at the goal line and then a block punt for a touchdown it's 7-7 after three minutes and there was more that happened in those three minutes mm. than most of the football games I've watched all season in entirety Seemingly all the big plays happened as another team was right about to score. Yeah. Like They all yes. happened in yes. the end zone. There was one that happened in the third quarter, and you're like, that might decide the game, but there's probably going to be seven more important moments before this game ends. I love how early it is in the college football season. I know there's a lot of Ohio State, Michigan people, but it's just such a joy to watch a high noon start in the Cotton Bowl, a 50-50 divided uh, stadium at the State Fair. It's one of my favorite traditions, and it's what makes college football the closest thing to European soccer here in the state in terms of tribalism and pride and uh, prestige and pomp and circumstance. I love it all. It was a bizarre viewing experience, especially towards the end, because you have a player being carted out, and then ABC News breaks in, and a lot of people are learning, oh shit, how bad everything is going on over in Israel, and then you go right back to the fireworks of Red River. It was, uh, it was a breakneck experience, that and was I the loved quick, it. That was the quickest update to a war I've ever seen. I mean, it was one minute back to football. It the, was crazy. The electricity was such that Pat McAfee, who was partaking in a 33-yard field goal for $45,000 that a student was uh, trying to win, yep. he called that experience the most bananas thing he's ever been a part of. I'm pretty sure he did a backflip off a turnbuckle at WrestleMania. And then he got stunned by Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> For him to call that the most bananas thing he's ever been a part of is at least in part because you can tell in that video with Lucy, the emotion around that. I don't know how much is that going to change. Uh, like, I've read that that's going to die. 
that that rivalry isn't going to feel like that. It's one of the things that's going to hurt the most in the cash transaction that is college football. One of the things that you're going to lose. I think that's part of the reason why it was hitting me so much right at the beginning of the game and watching these teams and the emotion that was there. It was like for the first time in a while and what feels like it might be the last time, I felt like I was just watching college kids who were there for the uniforms that were on the front of the chest and like (laughs) all of the cliches that we always say. No, look, hey, Dylan Gabriel is the ultimate example. He left UCF for Oklahoma specifically for NIL. Like these are guys that are existing in this world. But for whatever reason, based off of the pomp and circumstance around it, it felt like college football in such a specific way. It helped that both teams were 5-0. and Both teams were in national championship contention. Both teams have a shot at the playoffs. They still do, I guess, Texas does. Both I teams guess. have red-ass coaches yep. that I just mean, run red the entire time. Because they both have neck veins that pop out. Venables looks insane. He, oh does. My God, he looks like nuts. Fire Marshal Bill. He does. Like it, It's crazy looking at him. I can hear his teeth grit. Yes. And and Sark, I just haven't liked since that video before the bowl game where the cameraman or the field producer is just telling him, hey, stand back. And he's like, don't you f***ing touch me. That was crazy. Do you remember that video? Juju, Get your f***ing hands off me, guy. Like, holy shit. It's his like, birthday, relax. Give him a break. Uh, give him a break. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Levitard Games. Show. Does Venables, do the veins in Venables' neck have muscles from all the work they get from the rage? Because he does. Uh, Fire Marshal Bill is a good reference, if if dated, uh, in Living Color, one of Jim Carrey's first characters. And he does give off a certain level of insanity. Billy, I don't know whether college football made the cut for you, Billy, but I was floored to hear that you won an inter-family um, divide in that you got to put a projector a second projector in the house for sports oh, well that, he thinks he that, won. that your wife didn't want in the house uh was college football on it when did you decide to do this how did you decide to do this and uh what were you doing it for well so here's the deal is i have uh discussed possibly doing this for some time because the wall that the tv is in in the living room is rather barren and i've you know kind of I feel like I've given ample time for frames to go up or whatever, and there's still nothing there. So I have at times joked, I'm going to get another TV and put it there, to which my wife said, no, you're not. This is not a sports bar. So I said, okay, well, I can't I can't do that. I can't get another TV and just mount it on the wall because that's very obvious. That's a classic lie from the wife. Yeah. So Mine I did the same thing. I, put, it, put it on the pole. We've all been there. Has your partner slash wife ever said to you, uh, this is not a sports bar when you're trying to decorate the home with televisions? Well, so I've, I've been trying to figure out a workaround, and I figured out this projection thing a little while ago. And I always thought, like, hey, last football season I was really thinking about it, and I even, like, threw it out there, like, I think I'm going to get a projector and project onto the wall. And my wife said, no, you're not. And then, and then this year, it's not a sports bar. Yeah, it's not a sports bar. And then this it's year, I went on Amazon and I, I found one for thirty-five dollars. And I said, "This is a risk worth taking. I will buy this for thirty-five dollars. And if I get in trouble, I will deal with the ramifications for thirty-five dollars because I just need a proof of concept." So I did it this weekend. And then I had to, you know, hang a dark sheet over one of the windows, which she was not a fan of. So I don't know how long this is going to last. I feel like the, the days of watching two sporting events at the same time are numbered because I think what's going to happen is I'm going to have the game on the projection and Coco Melon is going to be on the main TV and I'm going to have to watch it on mute and I've really done myself a disservice and shot myself in the foot and given them an option but for one week Dan it was absolutely glorious. For one week. For one week. Dylan so Gabriel so delivered, bar. baby. It's so good. It was Billy so Sports good. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> what was on the TV? What red Zone you? and the Dolphins. Yeah. Then Red Zone and Sunday Night Football. Sometimes it's super tough to fit working out into your fall schedule. Between back to school, work obligations, family, and the return of football, fitness often falls down your priority list as a result. But your fitness shouldn't fall into that trap, especially if you're spending your hard-earned dollars on it. Enter the Peloton app, motivation that moves you, hooks you, and works for a variety of budgets. At Peloton, your routine should never feel routine. Flip the script this fall by tapping into Peloton's endless variety of exercise options with Peloton Bike and Bike Plus. From intervals to club banger rides, your workouts can go from can't face to can't wait. 
Plus, Peloton's not just a class. It's a fitness entertainment mashup that'll have you whooping along at the top of your lungs and telling your friends afterwards. Plus, it really works. 90% of Peloton households that join at the start of the year are still active 12 months later. Unsure? We've got you. Try Peloton Bike or Bike Plus free for 30 days. Not for you? Return it for a full refund. Find your zone with a 30-day worry-free home trial of Peloton bikes. Visit onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Hey guys, it's Tony. US Cellular is introducing US Mode. It's like airplane mode, but for people. You got that? Cool. It's a way to set up your phone so it doesn't get in the way of people really being with each other. Block distractions and make way for a real connection. Give it a try. Visit US Cellular in store or online and they'll help set up your phone to US Mode for free. Really, for free. Even if you're not a customer, they'll still do it. That's how good US Cellular is. Built for superior 5G connection and real human connection. US Cellular. Built for us. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Don Lebatard. We all know the word to last resort. Yeah. I, you know how I know it's a hit? Roy, Roy, you absolutely know all the words. My life into pieces. Finish the lyric. You're lying. Oh, no, you're, you're lying. lying. <laughs> Roy, I'm not yeah. having that. Roy, is Roy going to get the first ever attack from the chickens. Are you all accusing yeah, man, him yeah. of lie, wow. just yeah. lying that he does not know the song that we're yes, talking about? Stugatz. Cut my life into pieces. This is my last resort. Submission. No breathing. Don't give up. If I come back, beat me that's a guitar part. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the two gods. Hey, Dad. Thank you for not texting me about Miami over the weekend. I appreciate that more than the happy birthday call. Oh, I know nice. you thought about it. I know you thought about it, and you probably thought better about it. You did. Yeah. Well, uh, the three hours and all of that. So, I, and I couldn't see the game anyway. I, you didn't I, miss much. We don't have time, Papa Ruiz. We're doing a, we're doing a show here. Uh, let's Unless do, you want to make fun of your son. Let's I do Stugatz's okay. weekend observations. <laughs> it is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Weekend observations. Hang on. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. Dad's still on the line? I just hung up on him. Did you hang up on your dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what are you doing? It's weekend observations. He was wishing you a happy birthday. He asked me if it was 38. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know what year it was? He didn't know how old you were turning? No. I mean, no, he, he guessed right. <laughs> Brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste. 96 calories. Available for delivery. Dan... It wasn't too long ago when the only things we had were regular season baseball and Joey Chestnut. But with college football and the NFL in full swing, plus the Major League Baseball playoffs, plus the NBA and hockey season starting very soon, Dan, make no mistake about it, sports really are back. Just all of sports. Sports back. This is the best time of the year on the sports calendar. You say that every I do. month yeah. except the Joey Chestnut right. month. <laughs> you, all, you say that about every single I do. month. Especially April. March Madness. <laughs> it's a good time, though. You agree, right? I mean, Everything's just, happening. There are a lot of sports I mean, going on yeah. except for when Joey Chestnut, that one couple of days, <laughs> those couple of days where he's eating hot dogs. Yep. Pretty certain... When the new BCS standings come out, the Miami Hurricanes will no longer be number one. Dan, you know what the M in Mario Cristobal stands for? I do not. Not math. You know what the C stands for? I do not. Not championships. Dan, brace yourself. I'm serious. I'm braced. Hold on to something. Obi Toppin is a pacer. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's I, all happening. I would have thought that. What's all happening? Sports. <laughs> I would have thought that you would have known that as a oh, proud no Nick fan. <laughs> proud. What are you talking about? Dan, remember that thing I said about something being off in Athens? It's ne fixed. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, you bet Kentucky. Keep it moving. Yeah. You, you bet Kentucky uh, plus 14 and a half. <laughs> plus 15. I bought it up. <laughs> 
Why would you buy that up? I don't know. <laughs> Just in case it landed on 15. <laughs> He's got a problem with buying things down and up to the point where I think he spends more money buying things up and down than he wins on bets that he gets. You're right, Billy. He just doesn't like the half point and want, it wants to obliterate it, wants to eradicate the half point. <laughs> <laughs> College football. Chaos. Lionel Messi. Bust. Mike Conley is a T-Wolf. Oh, boy. I am doing a service for the audience. The NBA season will start, and rather than be shocked when you see it, I'm telling you right now. Okay? I uh, I would defy people in our audience to name Mike Conley's last couple of teams. <laughs> he played 24 games for the Timberwolves last year. He did? Uh-huh. He was uh, Utah before that, right? Correct. And right, what about before that? What? Memphis for, like, his whole career. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought there was a stop between Memphis and oh. Utah. The second I heard Dick Buckus passed away, I regretted my bet on the Commanders. You don't beat the Bears anytime Dick Buckus passes away. Rest in peace. Too soon? What, to rest in peace? I mean, he only passes away once. I said anytime. Too soon. Well, it had never yeah. happened before. <laughs> one, so. one and oh. It's <laughs> weird. It, it did inform what I would do with Thursday Night Football. <laughs> The emo- hey, Cole Komet scored a touchdown. The, you saw that? The, the Bears out of nowhere. Yeah, yes. but we had we had in our parlay we had Washington Manders on money the line. money line. Yeah, yeah. we but nailed we, two of the three. Bad. We didn't know. I mean, that, well, we didn't know that Dick true. Butt Kiss was going to die. Right? That's had fair. we known, that should yes. come with an asterisk. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you. Texas and Oklahoma. That had to be a tough name to grow up with, unless you're Dick Butt Kiss. <laughs> it's a very tough name for you're a right. child to have. So is Wiener. <laughs> Imagine your dick wiener. Right. Uh, dick kiss. <laughs> dick Paul. Kiss, yeah. Dick kiss wiener. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> redundant. It's not. It's, I, I, dick butt kiss is a truly terrible oh. name for a child to have. <laughs> but a great name for a linebacker. <laughs> I mean, I, I think only because he was a great linebacker are we saying it's a great name for a linebacker. I think it's just a terrible name. <laughs> Texas and Oklahoma at the Cotton Bowl. That's what SEC football is all about. Someone asked me over the weekend, Matthew McConaughey, cool or crazy? You can only pick one. Oh, wow. I didn't know which one to pick. Uh, put it on the poll, please, <laughs> Juju at Lebitard Show. McConaughey, cool or crazy? You can only pick one. It's tough because I would say yes. Cool or crazy? Yes. Yep. I mean, he got arrested for playing bongos naked. In his own house. That was like... It's an invasion of privacy. That was bullshit. <laughs> You're right, Tony. It's his house. He just barged in his house and arrested a man playing bongos naked. What is your own business? Yeah, he was a little loud. You don't... Missouri, you're exactly who we thought you were. Death, taxes, and Verstappen. That guy. Every year. Every week. Every race. Every race. No one. And I mean no one loves a goal line stand more than Brett Venables. Dan, you know what the G in Dylan Gabriel stands for? I do. Gonads. Know. Oh, wow. Big, gigantic gonads. What a drive. What a play. What a player. In the conversation. No. No, he inserted himself into no. the conversation. He no. did. Go Knights. Which, which conversation? Well, the Heisman conversation in Oklahoma's in the national championship no. conversation. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, he had a good game against Texas. I will not dispute it. I've watched him play this year. He is not as good as Penix. He's not as good as Drake May. He's not as good as Caleb Williams. He's not nearly as good as any of these people. Yeah, and we've been talking about dumb ones. Venables is good for a dumb one. Mm-hmm. Not certain what nepotism looks like, but I'm pretty certain it looks like Drake Stoops. Got a big pass. He did he's one. good. One pass. You know, Old Stoopsy. It's, it's actually fun watching him and the crowd coming alive going Stoops. Washington, Oregon. De facto playoff game. You can't say Stoopsy without putting an ol in front of it. Really? Yes. So if you're saying. Old Stoopsy. Okay, yeah. ol with an apostrophe. Yes. Thought you were going to put it on the poll. Grant Williams is a maverick. Texas A&M quarterback Mac Johnson threw a TD pass to his brother Jake Johnson. You, of course, know what that means, Dan. It means a couple of Johnsons were cutting it up at College Station. 
How about that? It's Max Johnson. Whatever. What did I say? I mean, yeah, I think you're right. It's not Connor Wegman, that's for sure. <laughs> 259 yards passing. 130 yards rushing for JT Daniels. You know what he did, Dan? I don't know what he did. You really? You don't know what he did? Did it all? Good guess, but no. Oh, that's too bad. He did a little bit of everything. Oh, a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. well, it sounds like he did a lot of... Wait a second. JT Daniels is still around? No way. Yeah. Jaden Daniels. Uh, oh. It's a okay. fine. It's a fine. Well, hang on. It's a fine. Uh, I'll pay it right now. It's a fine. Jaden Daniels. Oh, my God. JT Daniels is also still around. I'm good. He's uh, <laughs> but is it, it's He's not. at Rice. Oh, he really? looks like someone that's going to rice. <laughs> he threw for 362 yards in a loss to UConn. Wow. Still got, uh, you got to pay the fine. You just fined yourself. No, I didn't. But him being around, he's not who you were talking about. I was talking about Jaden Daniels. Well, then what? It's a fine. <laughs> Third school now for JT Daniels. Really? Yeah. Georgia, oh, West fourth. Virginia. Fourth? Yeah. Oh. Start at USC. Oh, yeah, USC, yeah. fourth school for wow. JT Daniels. That's college sports. <laughs> I, I think college sports is a Colorado State kicker with three kids who's 31. <laughs> I think that's college sports. <laughs> that's like <Yeah>. Lewis kicking, <laughs> which I'd be all in on, by the way. Guy's got a boot. You heard it here first. Ohio State will never win a national championship with Kyle McCord as their quarterback. Not happening. He's not good enough. If LSU was undefeated, Jaden Daniels would be the Heisman front runner. Cam Reddish is a Laker. I'd love to see a fight between Mick Cronin and Brent Venables. You wouldn't have to tell them to fight to the death. They just would. It's a given. It's all they know. It's, it's a given. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. You just put them in the yeah. same room and Venables is breaking a pool it's cue. Redundant. <laughs> it's redundant to say, hey, you need to fight to the death. Like, what, what do you mean? That's why we're fighting. Are there any other kinds? Why, why, why would I fight for, uh, for any other reason? <laughs> There's something going on with the Texas Rangers. Yeah, it's that you can't give 100-win teams five days off and expect to not ruin the playoffs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Atlanta Braves. Do it in the postseason. Lionel Messi, do it in the postseason. Brock Purdy, do it in the postseason. Clayton Kershaw, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Did you see the stat line? Do you know the stat line? No. A third of an inning, six runs, six hits. <laughs> one third of an inning. He got one out. Nobody cares that the hundred win teams clearly had their timing thrown off. Nah. I do, Dan. Nope. Nobody. I'm very cares. upset about it. <laughs> no. Nope. I mean, Baltimore's a great offensive team. Atlanta hasn't looked like they looked in game one all season. Not once in a game. So this there's season. an advantage to being a wild card team. There's yes. the, the advantage. No. The adv Stop. Stugatz, Set your rotation. Stugatz, Get out of here. Stugatz, the the three hundred win teams couldn't hit the baseball in the first game because their timing was all so screwed lose up. More. Ooh. In the regular season. <laughs> See Kershaw's ERA to guts? What? 162. <laughs> Do it in the postseason. <laughs> the Giants' defense has more first half touchdowns than their offense. The Tennessee Titans did what the Tennessee Titans do. It's one, right? The way it's one. <laughs> yes. It's one. It's yes. all, the Giants defense has one first half touchdown. Yesterday. And yeah. the Giants don't have any first half Correct. touchdowns. Their offense. Their right. offense. Okay. So did Mike Tomlin, by the way. He did what Mike Tomlin does. He has to be stopped. Someone needs to stop. You can't stop him. You can't do that to my football. <laughs> you can't you can't make me watch that and at the end you're three and two, Tomlin, and I'm looking around and I'm like, how the hell are you three and two? He can't keep getting away with this. How are but you three does. and two and yeah. the Vikings are one and four? How is that what what? Kenny Pickett. <laughs> Kenny Pickett who refuses to throw the ball downfield. Stat of the day. The Jets' 3 nothing first quarter lead yesterday was the first time they had a lead in regulation the entire season. <laughs> I got a stat of the day for That's you. That's the first time they had a lead in regulation the entire I, season. I think, Big I, win, though. I think I can top you, though, with today's stat of the day. What do you got? Jim Harbaugh, in his playing career, this is stunning, had more rushing yards than Bo Jackson. Come on. It's <laughs> impossible. Mm, no. No way. It's impossible. You're picturing him I don't in believe khakis, it. aren't you? In the in the backfield. You're of course picturing, I am. You're yes. not <laughs> Even if it's true, it can't be true. It is true. It, I couldn't believe it either. I think it's one of the greatest stats I've ever heard. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm going to blow your mind, Jeremy. There was a time where Jim Harbaugh was the swaggiest quarterback in the league. Yes. What? Yeah, he, he wore was. a headband. He was called yeah. Captain Comeback. Tough. He was just this, oh. yeah, this yeah. gunslinging Toughness. scrambler. Yeah. Yeah. The, the guy who drinks glasses of milk. That guy. Didn't he punch a reporter one time? He too? was a swaggy QB. He was. Beat the Chargers and the Bengals. Lose to the Saints, Browns, and Colts. That's Tennessee Titans football. <laughs> They're the best. <laughs> Dan, brace yourself again because Rudy Gay is a warrior. He's still playing. <laughs> no, guy, yeah, close so. friend personal. He's a warrior? He's a warrior. He's going to finally get that ring. Yeah, coming off the bench. Jamar Chase was right. He's always open. Joe Burrow, good to see you again. 60 Minutes, the godfather of artificial intelligence. That's what I'm talking about. AI. For the second consecutive Sunday from 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern, I sat there wondering how the hell the Jets lost to the Patriots. At home! Speaking of hell, Art Bryles. Dan, those are the weekend observations.